very good morning to everyone so we are continuing our lecture series on advanced hydraulics and we are in the last module called turbines in the last lecture we had described about pumps that is pumps how they are categorized they are categorized as pdps and dynamic in pdps there are reciprocating and rotary pumps we also suggested the types of dynamic pumps that are available centrifugal pump is one of the main dynamic pump and we were trying to analyze the centrifugal pump for that we use the bernoulli's principle and angular momentum principles so we suggested about the angular momentum right so today we will continue the same angular momentum and see how in the impeller blade of pump centrif especially the centrifugal pump how the pump theory works and all how the quantities can be defined then subsequently we will go for the uh, go through the other aspects of pumps and all and turbines if possible so uh, if you recall the angular momentum equation that was described in the last class for the impeller blade and all so let me write the rtt form okay so as the angular momentum equation using reynolds transport theorem you had come up with the following relationship that is dh by dt this is nothing but equal to r cross v rho v dot n so for any control volume this was the angular momentum equation and for steady state condition and we also suggested for the dynamic for the case which we are dealing right now this can be given as r cross v at the outlet into the rate of mass that comes out through this particular surface minus r cross v m dot in that is rate of mass that comes into the control volume through the inlet portion right normally as we are dealing with steady state condition m in that is the mass that is coming out and mass that is going out uh, coming in and that is going out they will be same which can be given as rho q right so, uh, let me ask you say or just by this particular small figure a figure say we suggested flow comes axially into the impeller right flow comes axially into the impeller and let us suggest this is the portion of the blade impeller blade so we have this can be given as one small circle of radius r1 one big circle so this is the impeller disc this is the small disc the outer disc and you will be having impellers of the following form like this right impeller blades you have seen a snapshot of the impeller blade and all right so let us assume this particular quantities now say this is radius r1 and this is radius r2 so in this case if we suggest that there is a tangential velocity at this location you know that water comes here hits the blade so this is the starting portion of the impeller blade i will just elaborately draw that particular portion again that will be say if you consider this particular any blade and all okay i can just again draw it 
So, that way it will be much much better clear. This is the inner radius and so this is an expanded view. So, please note that this is not the actual this portion. So, this particular portion it has been just expanded. So, you have some radius somewhere here. R 1, this is R 2, okay, the same thing just in an expanded form we have drawn it. So, in, in this particular case, we can now just draw the quantity say from this location, there is an impeller blade in the following form. And just just for our benefit, tangent. So, I am drawing an impeller blade like this now. Okay, this is how an impeller blade will coming into the picture. So water as it flows from like this and all, it will reach here. It will hit here. Means it will reach here, right? this impeller blade it is rotating it is rotating at an angle omega so both so if the impeller wheel it is rotating at an angle omega definitely the entire system this both the inner disc and the outer disc both are rotating right both the portions of that impeller disc is it is being rotating so you can have say outer tangential velocity v 2. So, I will elaborate it now again in the next figure. So, what we want to suggest is now, if this is the control volume that is you are going to consider, if this is the portion, the control volume, so you can have now m dot in this is nothing but equal to rho v n 1 say if this is of thickness b 2 pi r r 1 b 1 right and m dot out is nothing but density into normal velocity from the exit say at this location what is the v n 2 what this is V n 1, you can see here water is coming and hitting like that. Okay. So, V n 2, 2 pi r 2 b. So, b is same for both the cases in this particular case, this situation. Right? So, we can now write r 1 cross V 1, this is nothing but equal to r 2 into V t 2 with the unit vector component perpendicular to the both the vectors. So, r 2 cross v 2 this is nothing but see please note that we are making some simple mistakes this is r 1 v t 1 r 1 v t 1 into sin theta sin 90 that is the actual this is r 2 v 2 the component that vector will be perpendicular to both r 2 and v 2 like this you can suggest now. So, therefore, you will be writing sigma m 0 that is called the torque is nothing but equal to rho q that is m dot uh, m m in dot and m out dot both are equal to rho q right. So, rho q into r 2 v t 2 minus r 1 v t 1 right. 
that is having that is perpendicular to the this thing. So, this is the torque that has to be applied to the system pump system. So, here actually when it if it is rotated in that direction perpendicular to both R and V, if it is rotated that is the torque that is needed to be applied. So, these are called some uh, Euler's turbine machine equation. I can just again elaborate at this particular portion now. You can see here, here water uh, comes at a particular velocity. So, let us assume that the tangential velocity at the impeller at the impeller inlet so the tangential velocity at the impeller inlet let us that is at the impeller inlet that is impeller is at a particular angle like this so this particular angle let us assume it to be some angle called beta 1. So, the tangential velocity let us assume to the impeller direction V w, w 1 fine and let us assume at the exit point at this location the tan exit the tangential velocity to the impeller blade is w 2 fine like this you can assume certain quantities. So, water will be entering at the tangential velocity of the impeller blade direction like this. It will flow through this like this and it will come out like this. That should have been the theoretical situation or if the disc is not rotating this, this is how the flow could have occurred. Now, the disc is rotating at an angular velocity omega if this is rotating at like this thing, we are suggesting that. So, this disc is rotating, it will be having this disc will be having a velocity in this direction that is called u 1, this is nothing but equal to omega r 1, a tangential velocity. Similarly, at the exit point also there will be a tangential velocity due to the rotation of the disc right u 2 u 2 is equal to omega r 2 right. Like that you have now suggested components of velocity. So, there will be now a resultant velocity at the inlet portion of the blade impeller blade. There will be a resultant velocity which I can just give it in a different color now. So, there will be a resultant velocity say I am just writing it as v 1 this is the resultant velocity. A similar resultant velocity can be taken here also. So, this is how the exit occurs that is although water is coming up means going like this due to the rotation of the blades and all water will come and splash like that it will come out like that right. So, this is the resultant velocity of water at that outlet of the impeller blade and this is the resultant velocity at the inlet of the impeller blade. So, like that we have the directions now. So, these components, these resultant velocities v 1 that is inlet so inlet velocity as considered in the previous slide. say v 1 if it is like this, then that v 1 we can assume say if you have a two dimensional coordinate system x y like this, if we are assuming such a coordinate system, then based on that coordinate system let us assume that this is. So, this is the tangential velocity v t 1 and this is the normal velocity v n 1. Similarly, outlet velocity can also be described in the same form. So, say if it is like this V 2. 
so we can write it see this is v t 2 and this is v n 2 like that one can easily write the components of velocity and you can assume certain quantity say this is alpha 1, this is alpha 2. So, the outlet means the resultant velocity need not be in this particular direction, it can also be like this also that has to be calculated actually. So, one can infer it like that now. Using the same previous case, we have mentioned the net torque equation, right. So, the torque So, torque I can now write it as T 0, this is nothing but rho q into R 2 V T 2 minus R 1 V T 1, like this I, will be, I can write it. What is that uh, property of this torque? Means, why we want to describe this torque quantity? We have suggested that we have to give external power supply to the pump system. So, how much power should be supplied? So, power supplied it should be equal to the angular velocity into torque. So, this is omega into T 0, right. So, therefore, we can write P w is equal to rho q r 2 v t 2 minus r 1 v t 1 into omega. So, what is R 2 omega and what is R 1 omega, right. So, based on that you can write it as u 2 v t 2 minus u 1 v t 1. So, this is the power supply. Also, P w is equal to rho g q into difference in head, this we have studied earlier in the first lecture. So, therefore, del h now can be computed based on the power supplied P w rho g q, this is nothing but equal to 1 by g into u 2 v t 2 minus u 1 v t 1. Okay. So, these equations so, these equations are combinedly called, give it in a box, so, this particular equation as well as this equation. So, combinedly we refer them as Euler's turbine or you can say Euler turbine equations. Right. So, these quantities are referred in that way. So, we will do one example problem related to these features of the impeller blades. Just carefully look into the question. A commercial centrifugal water pump has the following impeller details. The inner radius R 1 is equal to 10 centimeter, outer radius R 2 is equal to 18 centimeter the angle of the blade at inlet the tangential of the inner disc it is 30 degrees if you recall that you generally call it as beta 1 in the theory part we have studied that right then angle of the blade at outlet of inner disc tangential similarly thing it is 20 degrees please note that this is not 30 degrees it is 20 degrees so, we will just will correct it here. The angular speed omega is equal to 1440 rotations per minute and the impeller disc thickness is 5 centimeter. 
Now, estimate the discharge, the water hose power and the head that has been generated from the pump. Can you solve it? So, it is a very, we have to go through the basics itself. Just recall the figure, right. So, you have this impeller, this thing beta 1 is given uh, 20 degrees, beta 2 it is given as, uh, sorry beta 1 is given as 30 degrees, beta 2 is given as 20 degrees, omega this is also given. So, all the quantities are given to you. So, we will be suggesting now the following quantities. So, given R 1 is equal to 10 centimeter, R 2 is equal to 18 centimeter, beta 1 is equal to 30 degrees and beta 2 is equal to 20 degrees. Okay. Then what do you mean by the angular speed is given as 1440 rotations per minute. So, one rotation, how do you express? One rotation is equal to 2 pi radians. Therefore, omega is equal to 2 pi into 1440. This is, how much is this value? Or whatever be? If I want to give it, say this is rotations per minute. So, I am just dividing it by 60 to give this many radians per second. So, I am getting this as 150.8 radians per second. So, I got omega as this quantity. Now, recall your velocity at the tip of the inlet u 1, this is nothing but equal to angular velocity of the disc into r 1. Right. So, this becomes 150.8 into r 1 is 10 centimeter that is 0.1 meter and your at the inlet of the impeller blade this is 15.08 meter per second. Similarly, at the outlet of the impeller blade the tip velocity will be 150.8 into 0.18. This is 27.14 meter per second. So, we got the tip velocities. Let us now suggest that for the design condition. Usually, when you design impeller blades and all, we design it in such a way that the resultant velocity at the inlet is having only the normal component. That is the tangential component, the resultant velocity, tangential component for the normal, uh, for the resultant velocity is considered as 0 or you want to design it in such a way that the tangential velocity there it is 0. So, that is generally we take v t 1 is equal to 0. It is being the impeller blades are designed it in such a way. So, therefore, whatever velocity is there resultant velocity is there v 1 at the inlet this is same as the normal velocity V n 1, is not it? Now, we can suggest the following quantities. You have the tip velocity in this direction 15.8 meter per second, this is U 1 at the inlet and at the inlet we have suggested the resultant velocity V 1 right v 1 is like this it is a normal component and the angle of the blade 
we have given it as beta 1 right is not it. So, we can now write the following quantity v 1 is nothing but equal to u 1 tan 30 from this particular figure. So, v 1 is equal to 15.08 into tan 30 that you know that is equal to 8.71 meter per second. Therefore, discharge Q this is given as recall that discharge equation 2 pi r 1 into B into V n 1 right. So, this is 2 pi into point 0.1 at the inlet B is 5 centimeter right. So, 0 0.5 then 8.71 this will give you 0 0.274 meter cube per second. So, this is the discharge in the motor sorry in that particular pump you have the discharge 0 0.274 meter cube per second. So, we are assuming steady state conditions. So, this discharge will be maintained as such. If you want it in a practical form this is nothing but the discharge from the pump is 274 liters per second. What is V n 2 now? Normal velocity at outlet what is V n 2? V n 2 is nothing but q by 2 pi r 2 into b. So, 0 0.274 2 pi into 0 0.18 into 0 0.05. This is nothing but equal to 4.85 meter per second ok. So, at the outlet so at the outlet the tip velocity of the blade u 2 is equal to 27.14 meter per second this we have already suggested now. So, let us give it like this now and V T 2 there will be some quantity V T 2 also from the something up to here. So, tangential velocity at the exit point V T 2 that is also available. You know that the blade is having an angle 20 degrees with the outer surface of the uh, disc and all right. So, 20 degrees is the angle. So, now you know that this is V sorry u 2 So, the resultant velocity V 2 will be something of this form right. So, we can now easily calculate compute what is V T 2. You can see the from the quantities here this is V n 2 V T 2 like that one can easily compute it. So, V n 2 by u 2 minus v t 2 this is equal to tan 20 am I right. So, just re rearrange the terms here you will get u 2 minus v t 2 is equal to v n 2 by tan 20 again rearrange substitute the quantities you have 27.14 or ok let me give it suggest like this. So, V t 2 the tangential velocity at the exit point V t 2 
is nothing but u 2 minus v n 2 by tan 20. Substitute the quantities, this is 27.14 minus 4.85 by tan 20. This will come to be about 13.81 meter per second. So, this is the tangential velocity at the exit point of the impeller blade. So, power delivered to the fluid, how will you calculate power delivered? You recall the Euler equation, Euler turbine equation. Power delivered to the fluid, I am just marking this. This is nothing but P V is equal to rho q u 2 v t 2 minus u 1 v t 1. right? Now, what is u 1 v t 1? You know the tangential velocity at inlet point it is 0. So, this becomes rho q v t 2 u 2. So, rho is we are taking water 1000 kilogram per meter cube discharge you know it is 0.274 v t 2 it is already computed now 13.81 and u 2 this is nothing but 27.14 meter per second right. So, you have substituted all the quantities right now calculate this thing this will come to be about 102696 joules per second or it is also called watt you can also write this as approximately 102.7 kilowatt the power so, so if we assume 85 percentage efficiency here for, uh, 85 percent efficiency then the power supplied the power supply to the pump set this is equal to 1 by 0.85 into 102.7, it comes to be approximately 120.8 kilowatt. So, you need to provide a power of 120.8 kilowatt in that case. Now, how much is the horsepower? You can easily find horsepower. Horsepower, so 1 whose power is approximately equal to 746 watt. So, therefore, you know that power in whose power can be easily written as say 102696 by 746. How much that I am giving it to you as homework. So, you can write it. This is the power in terms of whose power change in head change in head it can be given as del h so del h is nothing but p w by rho g q so this is 102696 by 1000 into 9.81 into 0.27 4. This is coming to be about roughly 38.2 meters. So, the change in head is coming to be roughly about 38 meters. So, this is the head that is being changed when you provided that particular pump. What is the effect of blade angle on the pump head? In the last example you already saw so, this is the change in head and all. So, in some cases it depends on whether if you want more discharge 
or whether if you want more head displacement or change in head, whichever is the objective based on that you have to select the pump. So, what is the effect of blade angle on the pump head? This del h term whichever was uh, quantified it is called the pump head. So, if we neglect the inlet angular momentum as we have seen in the last example, then we can express the power means we can usually express power as P w is equal to rho q u 2 v t 2. Okay. So, where your v t 2 is nothing but equal to u 2 minus v n 2 by tan beta 2, then v n 2 is nothing but equal to the discharge by 2 pi r 2 b. We are assuming the thickness b is constant. So, then you can now uh, easily write the pump head or change in head, it can be written as del h approximately equal to 1 by g u 2 into v 2. Recall the earlier portion. So, from that you can easily write it now in this particular way. What is this quantity? You substitute 1 by g u 2 and v t 2 you know it is nothing but u 2 minus v n 2 by tan beta 2. Right. So, this is nothing but u squared by g minus u 2 q g and what is this v n 2 is q by 2 pi r 2 b. So, that quantity we are substituting it here 2 pi r 2 b tan beta 2 like this you are getting the relationship. What is the physical meaning of this quantity now? U 2 means you can see that del h, uh, del h it is something related to discharge as well as the vein velocity. Right? So, u 2 square at the vein velocity at the exit point of the blade right? u 2 squared by g. So, how will you quantify the thing? So, head varies you I can just write it like this also. The head varies linearly with discharge. It varies linearly with discharge q. So, del h equal to u 2 squared by g minus u 2 q by 2 pi r 2 b g tan beta 2. Right? So, you can suggest now if beta 2, if your beta 2 here, if it is less than 90 degrees, what happens? Then del h is equal to del h is positive. If beta 2 is less than 90 degrees, it will be always positive. Why? Because tan beta will sorry, I am just very sorry here. If it is beta 2 is less than 90 degree, then del h will be positive only if 
u2 squared by g is greater than u2 q by or u by g is greater than q by 2 pi r 2 b g tan beta 2 like that one can say is not it. If beta 2 is greater than 90 degrees then del h is positive because you know u 2 squared by g that is a positive quantity and here your minus and minus quantity is coming. So, it will become totally positive fine. So, I can now write the same quantities in the following form. We can represent it by the following picture means whichever is being suggested del h versus q if you plot it. So, this I can suggest that this in this particular diagram this is for beta 2 less than 90, this is beta 2 equal to 90 and this is beta 2 greater than 90 like this you can infer from this particular picture. Next, what we would like to see is axial flow pumps. Till now, the centrifugal pumps, whichever we have studied, they are readily flowing pumps. Means, although they are dynamic pumps, flow into the impeller and all, they are in the radial direction. That is, uh, from the impeller location base, it will just readily divert through the impeller blades right to the diffuser section and subsequently to the outlet section and all. There are pumps which allow flow in the axial direction as well. So, we have axial flow pumps where the impellers are rotated in a concentric cylindrical casing. So, they will be rotated in that concentric cylindrical casing and they will be having some rupture, uh, rupture uh, points where it is connected to inlet and outlet in the alternate, alternately it will be connected. So, direction of flow through machine is axial unlike in centrifugal pumps. The flow characteristics of axial flow plumps, they in, it is being given by this following picture here. If you plot Q versus change in head or pump head or Q versus PW or Q versus efficiency, you will see that there will be a maximum efficiency at a certain particular discharge. Okay. Beyond that, if you increase the discharge even slightly, there will be a rapid decrease in the efficiency. Similarly, if you decrease means if you have less discharge compared to that particular value, then also the efficiency decreases. You can also see del h versus q. If the pump head, if it is lowered, you will get higher discharge, right. S efficiency, similarly power, power it is more or less means you are not comparing that much. So, this particular feature of axial flow pumps play a significant role. You will see that the blades of the axial flow pumps as they are fixed to a hub. The disadvantages of the axial flow pumps are, so hub means some particular this thing where the blades are connected like this. Okay, such quantities are called hub. So, the blades of the axial flow pumps impeller fixed to a hub, then the disadvantage are they develop low head steeply descending efficiency curves and there may be regions of instability for pressure and volume at low discharges. The next quantity which we would like to study is mixed flow pumps, where both radial and axial flow occurs in the pump. So, that have configurations in between those things. So, you can suggest now the impeller consists of a conical hub as it is suggested here. This is a conical hub 
with blades attached. These are the blades attached. The flow into the impeller is axial. You will have flow axially here. Then it will go readily. Then through the impeller, both radially and axial flows are occurring as it has to flow like this, not only in the radial direction, it has to flow like this also, it has to cover this. This is the outlet portion. So, this much portion it has to cover. So, it has both axial and radial components. So, advantage of these flows are that they offer large, uh, these pumps are they offer large discharges. Uh, they are they can be easily arranged in multi stage units. Uh, its efficiency is quite high, means they have nearly 90 percent efficiency, and you can use them. The next category of pumps, which we told, means we suggested that there are two categories of pumps dynamic pumps and positive displacement pumps, right. In the positive displacement pumps, as we have mentioned earlier positive displacement pumps, they are different from the dynamic pumps. They, uh, some of the pumps we have studied reciprocating pumps, rotary pumps, ro rotary gear pumps, rotary vein pumps, piston, rotary piston pumps. We will just briefly give a quick or we we'll just quickly look into the, these aspects. What is meant by reciprocating pumps? So, reciprocating pumps it consists of a piston moving to and fro in a cylinder. You have a piston moving to and fro in a cylinder. So, the piston is driven by a crank like electric motor or IC engine etcetera. So, in that the piston is driven by a crank or electric motor IC engine. I will just give a diagrammatic uh, representation of the thing. The pressure in the cylinder reduces when piston is moved away from the valve that is during the suction portion that is it is getting the suction for suction uh, this thing suction develops in that cylinder and water is pushed from the uh, suction pipe. When the water is pushed from the suction pipe, it opens the suction valve and enter, it allows water to enter into the chamber or the cylinder. So, when the piston subsequently as it reaches the limit, then the piston moves in the opposite direction and it tries to close the cylinder. Okay. In that case, what happens? So, the piston is moved inside. So, it is called the delivery stroke. So, this is suction stroke and delivery stroke. So, water from the cylinder now goes into the delivery pipe. This is how the reciprocating pump works. So, this cycle is repeated several times and based on that the efficiency things are noted there. Say, if I just draw a uh, cylinder like this. Okay. So, I am just connecting it to a small valve here, small valve here. So, this is a closed cylinder. A piston, okay, I can give it in a different color also. A piston is suggested here. So, which the piston moves in this direction as well as is this direction. So, when the piston moves in this direction, the chamber gets expanded that is the volume in that it is getting expanded. right? So, I forgot to draw the subsequent portions. So, there is a pile or hose connected to the tank or lake or river whichever be water body from which you need to extract water. 
ok so the open uh, let us assume the water body whichever you are taking into account it is open to the atmosphere so atmospheric uh, pressure exists at the surface of that water body so, so when the piston is moved away like this in this portion suction develops here it is called the suction stroke of the what this thing suction develops here so this portion will be in suction low pressure wa atmospheric pressure will be now greater than the pressure in this quantity so it will push water like this and water is pushed into the hose and it reaches here the valve opens and it enters in this chamber now what happens this reaches the limit here and it's now goes into the delivery stroke so it goes in the opposite direction like this this piston so the chamber is getting closed pressure is getting increased this valve is opened water is now pushed through this hose like this to the delivery region so it may be a water tank or a whether if it is irrigation which are be water will be pushed into it so this is the simple mechanism of reciprocating pumps rotary pumps rotary pumps they uh, they consist of rotating elements so it has rotating elements uh, at least one rotating element should be there it displaces a finite volume of fluid during each revolution the features are rotary pumps usually have more than one rotating chamber to minimize fluctuations and in inertial effects the chambers rotate and come in alternate contacts with inlet and outlet the rotational speeds are usually high in such rotary pumps rotary pumps are generally used for very large heads and small volumes if you want to displace only small volume but very large head is there for those cases rotary pumps are used you have rotary pumps like gear pump vane pump screw pump rotary piston pumps etc so as uh, we don't want to go further into the details of these types of pumps we just want to stop those quantities here just as a brief passing by statement we would like to make those 